morning grade 7 let's continue with the topic okay let's continue the discussion let's move now to air pressure and the atmosphere so last meeting we had discussed about the the atmosphere the layers the atmosphere what else the pollution the the land also or the soil okay, we already done discussing that one let's move now this is actually moving forward to typhoons so let's take a look at air pressure and the atmosphere. Each layer of air presses down on the layer below it with a force equal to the weight, all air above it. Okay, so Earth's gravity pulls air towards the Earth's surface. Remember that actually the, 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 the weight of this is actually pulled by the gravitational pull, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Air exerts pressure on Earth. Okay, this pressure is called air pressure, of course. Okay, any change in weight of the air in the atmosphere changes the pressure it exerts. These are the three factors that cause the weight of the air to vary. These are number one, change in altitude. Okay, the more we change the altitude, the more we, we go high, we actually change the weight of the air. Okay, remember again that the gravitational pull is 9.8 meters per second squared. Change in composition. It could be dust. It can actually carry dust. It can actually carry more water vapor. So the, the change in composition can actually what change its weight. The change in temperature. Okay, the more hotter okay, it is, the more water vapor it carries. Okay. So the change in temperature also can actually affect the weight of the air, okay? Air pressure and humidity, okay? As air in the atmosphere is heated, fewer molecules are contained contain in the space it occupies. And so it weighs less. This means that warm air exerts less pressure than cold air. Why? Why do you think so? What, what do you think is the main reason again? Why warm air? Exerts less pressure than cold air. Are you still with me? Yeah. Okay. What is the main reason again why warm air exerts less pressure than cold air? Are you with me? What do you think is the reason? It's it is actually stated there. Because what? Less because? pressure. Less okay. Um warm air is lighter. Warm air is lighter, yes, correct. Any other idea? Um, the molecules. Okay, the molecules of warm air is? Few. Few, okay. Why? Why it's few? Since actually it is moving faster. Okay, the more it moves faster, the more it is actually fewer, of course. And cold air is much heavier simply because it is now in the process of condensation. Okay? And then precipitation. So that's the main reason why warm air exits less pressure than cold air. Okay? Warm air can also hold more water vapor than cold air. The quantity of water vapor in air is called humidity. Okay. Humid. What do you think is humid or humidity in vernacular? Can you translate it in vernacular? Humidity. Humidity. Uh... Vernacular in Bisaya. What is humid? What is humidity? Humid. What it what feels like to be to have a humid 
Okay, environment. Humid. In Visaya, it is? In it. In it, yes. It could be in it. In Visaya, humid means any other idea aside from in it? Humid I means. Don't know. My Visaya isn't that deep. Huh? I don't know. I don't have a word for it since I'm not really good with dial our own dialect. Okay. So, what is other term for humid, Travis? Not Visaya. Okay, for us to be fully understand the humid. What is other term for humid? Okay, let's change the topic. Let's. Uh, let, you know, so you, I just said he. So that we can actually understand further. Okay, what is the another term for humid, Travis? Uh... If we are I don't not have an idea. Okay, go. That is the main reason why. Okay. I am now reducing the terms. This is unlocking of difficulties. Okay. If you're going to discuss humidity and humidity, humidity, humidity there, humidity where. And you don't understand the term humidity at all. So how can we understand the topic if we don't understand the word humidity? Humid. Kaisel already told us that humid is in it. Correct. Yes. There is, yeah, there is a point. If it is humid, it is really in it. Okay. That is why I'm asking you to convert that one into Bisaya, because that is our base word, or ba base um, dialect, so that everybody can understand. In my sense, I can understand further because I am a science instructor. I am a science professor, so I know the concept. But how about the others? See? So let's convert this one into another term so that we can fully understand this one, the topic itself. We cannot move forward unless we understand the concept of humidity. Because we're always talking about humidity after all. And we don't understand what is humidity really is. Correct? So again, Travis, what is the other term for humidity for the sake of your classmates? Understanding it. Come again? It, it was actually um, given by Kaisel. Heat. Heat is in it. Hot. Heat, hot, yeah, it was given by Kaiser a while ago. Very warm. Warm, heat, hot, so those are the same. Okay, if, if it is humid, it is, it is tropical environment. Tropical, tropical is, yeah, in the Similar. other terms. Okay, tropical. If it is tropical, it has heat, of course. The environment is hot. Yeah. Any other term? Fiery. Possible. Any other term? Boiling. Sunny. Summer. Yes. During sun, sunny season and, or summer, it is really humid. Correct. It is really humid. Any other term? I don't have any other terms. Okay. Humid means alimut. When it's about to rain, yes. When it, come, it becomes humid when it's about to rain, yes. It's alimut. What is really happening in the environment or the atmosphere during humidity? If you if the environment is humid, then it says again, the air in the environment 
is said to be humid when it contains a lot of water vapor. When it contains a lot of water vapor, tendency is there is no space for a water vapor or any water vapor to, to occupy. This is now the time that you feel hot. You feel the heat, okay? Since it is humid, okay? In humid um, environment also, you cannot, um, you, you cannot justify or you, you cannot actually have your, your clothes wash clothes to dry up soon. Why? Why, sir? Remember that the atmosphere is already full with water vapor. So there is no space for, that, for the water vapor, the evaporated water vapor to fill the environment. That's the main reason why. Okay. Again, we are now converting these terminologies into the lowest term in order for you to fully understand and for us to move forward. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? No. No. All right. No. Air pressure and wind. Okay. Let's take a look at now the air pressure and the wind in terms of what? Atmospheric? movements there are two general types of winds the local winds and the global winds okay the local winds are the most familiar to you okay they flow from any direction usually cover or short distances global winds from specific um direction and always travel long distances both local winds and global winds are the cause by differences in air pressure due to unequal spreading of air take note an equal spreading of air. There is, is there an, an equal spreading of air? The answer is yes. So meaning to say that um, this now answers the question why some areas, okay, in our in, in our village or in our neighbor experience rain and the other side experience sunny area or sunny environment or they don't have rain there but the other area has the rain. So because there is what? An equal wind spreading or air spreading. Okay, winds are characterized by their speed and direction. Okay, scientists measure wind speed in kilometers per hour by using an anemometer. Okay, wind direction refers to the direction from which the wind generates rather than where it's going. Okay, we usually characterize them from their sources. Okay, and the direction. Okay, movements in the atmosphere. After talking about wind, okay, wind, and after talking about air pressure, let's move now to movements in the atmosphere because these are the, what? These are the elements that actually moves in the atmosphere. Weather is the condition of the atmosphere at a given time and, and place. It is affected by solar radiation temperature, air pressure, wind, humidity, okay, clouds, and precipitation. Okay. All these elements change frequently. Okay. Each country has a typical average weather or, ty or typical or average weather condition. In Philippines, April and May are warm summer months. Today, supposed to be we are still in the what in the warm summer month. I'm just supposed to be in tropical, but because of uh, global warming, it changed the weather. Yeah, global warming actually affects weather patterns. Correct. Again, April and May supposed to be our warm summer months, while July and August are the rainy months. However, however. These seasons have become erratic because of unusual weather due to climatic change or climate change. Okay, the average weather in a region over a period of time is called climate. Okay, climatic changes. Temperature. Let's talk about temperature. When sun is shining, the air touching the land is usually warmer and less dense than air touching the water. As warm air over the land rises. 
cooler air from the sea breeze or sea moves inland, forming sea breezes or sea breeze. But at the night, the land cools off faster than water, so the air over the land cools off faster and become denser than the air over the, the, the sea water, okay, over the water. Okay, this cool air moves to the sea, replacing warm air. Okay, a blow of air from the land to the sea is called land breeze. Okay, if we have sea breeze, okay, cooler air from the sea moves inland, or from the sea, it, if the air is moving inland towards the land, it is called sea breeze. From the land, okay, air moves towards the sea, replacing the warm air, okay, it is called land breeze, okay. Thus, temperature of an area is affected by the presence or absence of sunlight and by the presence of land and water. This is the main reason. So, meaning to say that um, from the from hot going to the cold, okay, and this is now the movement from hotter air going to the go replacing it or replacing the cold air. Okay. Again, if it is from the sea going to the inland, it is called sea breeze. And if it is from um the, the inland going towards the sea. It is called land breeze. Okay. So this is now the movement of air. Okay. Inland from the inland sea breeze and land breeze. Okay. Air masses. Let's take a look at air masses. Change in weather are caused by movements of air are called air masses. The air masses have the same temperature and humidity throughout. Some air masses form over oceans, other forms or form over continents. The amount of moisture in the air mass depends on where the air mass develops. Okay, we're talking about again humidity here. Okay, when two air masses meet, a front forms. Okay, what is really a front? A front is a boundary between air masses that differ in temperature and humidity. They actually differ in temperature and humidity. So they meet, okay? When they meet, it actually creates a front. The weather at a front is usually unsettled and stormy. Four different types of fronts are possible. So what are these fronts? A warm front forms when a mass of warm air overtakes a cold air mass and moves over it. Okay, rain and showers usually accompany a warm front, then hot, humid weather usually follows. Okay, warm front, okay, when a mass of air, warm air overtakes a cold. If it is of, if it overtakes a cold mass or air or air mass and moves over it, it actually creates Rain shower, rains and showers. And after a humid weather pattern, or because it becomes warm and hot. So this is now the warm front. As you can see, warm air overtakes cool air. Okay. A cold front is formed or is actually formed when a mass of cold air meets and replaces a mass of warm air, okay? The tendency is there is violent storm associated with cold front, okay? And then fair, cool weather usually follows, okay? Are you, have you heard about the word a tail of cold front? Okay, this is it. Tail of cold front, meaning to say that is the end of the meeting, the meet, um, or the, the, the junction of cold air mass and warm air mass. A cold front travels faster than warm front. Okay, when a cold front overtakes warm front, 
and is rushed upward, and a kiloaded front occurs. Kiloaded front. What is a kiloaded front? Produces less extreme weather than the cold or warm front. It may also occur when cool air overtakes a cold front and a warm air is pushed upward, resulting to a cold frontal zone. So let's take a look at this later. When a warm air mass meets, meets a cold air mass and no movement occurs, a, a stationary front forms. Stationary front means what? It stays in, in the same place. It doesn't actually create movement. Rain may fall in an area for many days when a stationary front is in place because, again, it doesn't actually create movement. So it stays in a, in a specific location. Okay. As you can see, this is cold front. Okay. It creates a storm. Okay. It creates a storm because, again, um, warm air overtakes the cold. So there is a faster condensation happening. And this is associated with storms and typhoons. Let's move now to the seasons in the Philippines. Okay, As we all know that our season, we have wet and dry season only. And this season is really affected by climate change. Compared to some countries in the world, Philippines has only two seasons. We have only two seasons, the dry and the wet season or rainy season. The dry season may be divided into two. Okay, Dry, cool season, which occurs from December to February. Dry and cool. This is the Christmas breeze. Okay, Why? And dry, hot season during months of March to May. Okay, Dry and hot, supposed to be so hot. Rainy season happens during the months of June to November, and the hottest month usually occurs, usually occurs in April and May. Areas located in the tropics near the equator, like Philippines, receive constant solar radiation. Hence, they do not experience much seasonal temperature or temperature change compared to areas in the temperate zones, which have warm summers cool winters with mild temperature during spring and fall. So they have actually different seasons. But in the Philippines, because we actually receive constant okay, radiation, solar radiation, so we have two seasons. Storms and typhoons. We're talking about storms and typhoons, as the weather forecast today, we experience actually, it is a, a, a two typhoon meeting okay it is they are actually talking about um one typhoon being swallowed by another typhoon so it really happens okay when a cold front moves in and meets the warm front cumulonimbus clouds cumulonimbus meaning it is a combination of cumulus and nimbus clouds Produce thunderstorms. Thunderstorms are heavy rainstorms with thunder and lightning, lightning, and can be violent. Sometimes these typhoons or this lightning can be really violent. It can cause serious damage. At the same time, electric fusion. Okay. During thunderstorm, areas of positive and negative electrical charges build up in the storm clouds that result to lightning. Okay, take note that it actually carries. Um, thousand volts, and it can actually kill an organism. Lightning is a sudden discharge or spark of electricity between clouds in the ground, causing air to heat and expand explosively. This expansion results in thunder. Sometimes, hail is produced during a thunderstorm. Okay, hail is one of the most destructive form of precipitation. Hailstones are small balls of ice that fall on the ground. Okay, we, we didn't yet experience hailstorm, but this is really what? This is really destructive. Okay, it can actually what damage your cars, even your roofs, because these are 
balls, small balls of ice. Okay, according to geologists, cyclones are low pressure areas with spiraling winds. The strongest winds of cyclones are at the center. Okay, high pressure areas or anticyclones have the strongest winds and at their edges and usually bring better weather, which is usually clear giant pair. Are you still with me? Yes. yes. Do you have any questions so far? No. No. In northern hemisphere, wind blows in counterclockwise direction. Okay. Around a low pressure area in southern hemisphere, exact opposite happens, which wind blows counterclockwise around cyclones. Okay. It is actually the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect is the apparent shift in the path of object moving above the surface Earth due to Earth's rotation or the rotation of the Earth. There is an area on the equator where wind from the northern and southern hemisphere comes together. Okay, The region is called the Intertropical Convergence Zone. Are, have you heard about ITCZ, the Intertropical Convergence Zone? No, I haven't heard of it. Okay, you need to watch news because this is usually mentioned okay, in, in news, weather news, okay, weather updates, the intertropical convergence zones. This is now again the, the area where northern and southern hemisphere comes together. Okay, the wind passed to northern and southern hemisphere, the equator. Okay, this is now the area. Okay. Consequences of this movement are the monsoon seasons, which brings a lot of rainy, rain effects or affecting areas in the tropics. Monsoon winds. This is now our winds. Okay. We usually um, term them, the monsoon winds, as Habagat and Amihan. Have you heard about Habagat and Amihan on news? Yes, I heard, I heard of it a lot from my dad also. Okay. So those are monsoon winds okay the difference in in the heating and cooling of air land and sea generates monsoons monsoon winds are seasonal winds that blows over northern part of indian ocean and blow over the most of the surrounding areas a okay. monsoon weather may last for days or weeks in the philippines monsoon rains occur during the month of late april to early october called southwest monsoon locally known as Habagat. Yet again, Southwest Monsoon are also known as, or locally known as Habagat. A type of weather pattern produces heavy rainfall and strong winds. From Habagat, the Philippine weather moves northeast monsoon, northeast monsoon, or Amihan, which come from in October to February. Okay. The Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, have you heard about Pagasa? Calls this as transition period. Do you know Pagasa? Yes. 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 Okay. This is usually mentioned again on weather updates or weather news. Okay. Pagasa means Philippine Atmospheric. Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration. They are actually a government agency that monitors weather patterns, monitors typhoons. And they usually give what? Warning. The news that we actually receive are from Pagasa. The warning also that we receive in NDRRMC are actually from Pagasa. Okay. It is actually a signal or a warning for us, okay, that there is a coming typhoon. Okay, it is really important also that we know the code that they're actually using. Okay, now the updates given by Pagasa as of the moment via NDRRMC, red rainfall warning sa Leyte at Cebu, uh, sahan ng matinding pagulan pagbaha at pagguho ng lupa. So meaning to say that it actually gives us a warning. 
this is really um, a, 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 a good um, indication that Pagasa is doing their part for us to give an information about incoming typhoon. Okay, this is for us also to prepare ourselves if in case, right? Some violent storms form over oceans near the equator. When storms are formed over Atlantic, okay, they are called hurricanes. While when formed over Pacific, they are called typhoons. But 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 with the same origin. Okay. Again, when storms are formed over Atlantic, they are called hurricanes. While when formed over Pacific, since our typhoons usually forms over Pacific, it is called typhoons. Okay. With the same origin. Right? but different locations. Typhoons in the Philippines, due to its location, it is affected by tropical cyclones, which are characterized by a counterclockwise movement of winds over low pressure. We still have three minutes more. Usually occur during the months of June to November and may be classified into three categories depending on wind speed. Okay. One is tropical depression. It has a maximum wind speed of less than 63 kilometers per hour. Okay. It is tropical depression. And we usually name typhoons in our local names. Why do we need to name typhoons with our local names? For us to fully understand that it actually enters the Philippine area of responsibility. We already done discussing PAR, correct? You're familiar with PAR, the Philippine area of responsibility? Grade 7, no. there's still... We didn't yet discuss part area of responsibility. No, we haven't. We haven't. I think we haven't yet. Okay. Once it enters, once a typhoon enters a Philippine area or our Philippine area of responsibility or par, it will be named in our local name. Okay. The second one is tropical storm. It's a maximum speed of sixty-three kilometers to hundred eighteen kilometers per hour. Now, if higher than 18, 118 kilometers per hour, it is now considered as typhoon, okay? Which is the maximum speed of 118 to 220 kilometers per hour. And the fourth one is the strongest one, a super typhoon. It is greater than 220 kilometers per hour, okay? We, al we already experienced super typhoon on... on on this year and the previous years. So you know already the impact of Super Typhoon. Okay. I think that will be all for this module. And hopefully we can do um, the activities by next meeting. Hope also you understand some of the concepts that we had discussed. This is really important because this concept, you'll be bringing this concept all throughout. Okay, You'll be using this one in your higher years. That is why I'm emphasizing this one. I am giving you a strong foundation or the knowledge of this. Right? I think I'll go for today, class. We have less than a minute to continue okay. or discuss. Do you have any questions so far with the discussed topic? No, sir. No. Let's no. have the activities by next meeting, hopefully. Thank you for your participation. Grade 7. Have a nice day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye.